All right, in this one, we're given the graph of f of x. You'll notice that we don't have the rule for f of x. All we have is the graph. And we are to suppose that we want to approximate f of x with the quadratic Taylor polynomial centered at x equals 5. Now, when we see quadratic Taylor polynomial, we know that that is t2 of x. And so to do part a here, um, to start, we can just write out the general form of t2 of x. t2 of x looks like uh, a0 plus a1 x minus c. Remember that c is the center. And now, since we're given that x equals 5, it's centered at x equals 5, we know that the center C is 5. So we can just plug that 5 in there. And that's all we got to do for part A. Now, for part B, we want to approximate the values of A0 and A1. So using our formula, for the coefficients of a Taylor polynomial, this formula being a n equals f to the nth derivative of the center c over n factorial. Remember that, uh, so one thing to take note of is that this f n there, remember this is, uh, if you just have like a three there, that means that's the function cubed, but if you put it in these little parentheses there, that's the third derivative. Okay, so that's just a little example there. Um, all right, so a0 is f0 derivatives. You can think of it as, as how many different uh, primes do we have there, right? If we have a little zero there in those parentheses, that means we have zero of those primes. zero factorial. Remember, zero factorial is defined to be one. So really, a zero is just f of five. That's the function value at five. And so we can see here from our, that our function uh, f of five, and we're, think of f of x, remember y equals f of x. f of x or f of five, this is the height, how far up or down you go at five. Right? And you can see here that at 5, we don't go anywhere. We just stay at 0. So a0 equals f of 5. How far do you go up at 5? f of 5 is 0. So a0 is 0. And then we'll find a1. So a1, using the same formula again, a1 is f to the first derivative, so f prime of 5 over 1 factorial. Remember, 1 factorial is 1, so this is really just f prime of 5. Okay, so a1 is f prime of 5, and we're going to figure out what we're going to approximate f prime of 5. Okay. All right, so remember f prime is the slope of the tangent line. So now let me draw in a little tangent line here, something like that. Not the best looking line in the world, but still a line there. Okay, let me try that one more time, make that look a little nicer. Something like that. Okay, well, that wasn't very good, huh? All right, that'll work, I think. All right, so we're going to approximate the slope of this line. So remember the slope formula, y2 minus y1. 
over x2 minus x1. And so we just kind of have to eyeball it here a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little line like this. Maybe I should do it in red. Just to indicate that this is my endpoints there. Now I'm going to actually just that little point there and that little point there. That's where I'm, so that's what I have. So I'm just, for me personally, uh, it just works good to have this little visualization here of like what I'm actually doing. Okay, so we're gonna get the slope of that line. So the, to get the slope of the line, we gotta have two things, right? The, the points there. So um, if you, so now looking at this first point right there, or that top point there of our tangent line, let's see. And you think about the X going over the X distance. Let's see uh, the dot, the black dot, the, the black dot right there. That's at uh, X equals five. So let's see, what is that? Maybe um, 5.6 about, so 5.6. And then the Y value, let's see, here's Y equals zero, Y equals one. So it's at one there. So same thing for this one. Now we're gonna look at that point right there. And we say, okay, well, what is that now? What's the X? That looks like about 4.2 two maybe 4.2 uh, if that was a straight line that'd be about 4.2 let's say that's about 4.2 and then the y value here is negative one okay so doing this math now uh, let's see you got one minus a minus one all over 5.6 minus 4.2 and now I did this math um, you know one minus minus two that's two so two over um, one point one point four and two over one point four and I came out with approximately 1.42 all right, so that tell so that's approximately 1.42. And so it tells us that A1 is approximately 1.42. Okay, so that's how you'd find um, A0 and A1 with a problem like this. Now let's think about finding what is A2. All right, so remember, so now using our formula again, A2 is F2, so two primes there of five over two factorial. Now we're just trying to determine if it's positive or negative. So, um, but in any case, right, two, two factorial is two times one, so that's two. So you have two, and this is F double prime of five. So A2 is F double prime of five over two. So two is two is always positive, right? So what's gonna, so the only thing that's gonna determine the positive or negativeness is F double prime of five. Now remember F double prime, uh, this determines the concavity. Concave up is the same as F double prime positive. Concave down is the same as F double prime negative. So really we just need to look for look at the concavity of our graph at five. Now remember concave up is something kind of, you know, is something like the idea is something like that. Concave down is something like that. Um, but it's a little more subtle than that, right? You can see here that our graph is pushing is more, is up. So it's concave up, so it's positive. 